We are headed to Ben Palmer's place, 406 Garage. Ooh. The International Harvester Guru. This old boy bought this truck brand new and he had a big ranch out there. And this is original paint, original interior. And the first week he had it, he gave it to the ranch hands because they were going out to use it and they were doing fencing, they were moving cows and all stuff like that. Jesus. First week they had it, the, the, the ranch hands backed into a freaking fence post with it and smashed the door right there. <laughs> now, they, the, the, the owner was out of town for a couple weeks while they were working. So they took off the stock bumper, built this behemoth steel rear bumper that just, I mean, I think probably weighs 400 pounds, and put a hitch on it and did all this stuff like that. They mudded all this up, went down to the dealership, got some paint, sprayed it and whatnot, <laughs> and the owner, never knew for like it. years, never even knew about it. <laughs> Fast forward like 25 or 30 years, my buddy Scott bought this truck from that farmer. And so it was his daily driver, he's driving it to work every day. Well, he had it parked out in front of the, the, the repair shop. And this is 1991, 1992, you know, so this is 30 years after this truck was built. This old boy comes walking in his shop. Now, mind you, this truck lived 350 miles to the east of where this shop is. This old boy comes walking in in overalls and stuff, and he's clearly like a farmer rancher. And my buddy Scott, who owns the shop, he's up at the front desk. The guy comes up and he's like, is that yellow travel oil out there? Is that belong to somebody here or is that a customer's? He's like, well, it's mine. Why? And he goes, want to know where that dent came from? <laughs> and he's like, how do you know where that dent came from? He's like, I used to drive that truck on the ranch. He's like, <laughs> I'm the one who did it. He's like, you are kidding. And so he proceeded to tell him the whole story of how the ranch hand backed into the post and they fixed that's it. That's awesome. He's like, that's why it has the bumper well. So we tore the bumper off eventually and I put the regular bumper on and then Rigged is one of my uh, affiliate sponsors and the good buddies of mine. So they built me the ultra swing for the back of this. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of evolved. And I grew up in a travel all. That's how this whole thing started. Kind of like with us with the, uh, with the OBS stuff. Yep, yep. So we grew up with a travel all, a car top boat, and a 21 foot tandem axle chassis trailer yeah, yeah. coming over, going camping and fishing and nothing. And so this has a lot of memory for me because I rode one of these my entire childhood. The fact that, that you uh, that you have one that's not got rusted fender wells and all that stuff, because these, man, you know, but these things rust so bad. Yeah. You walk around here, you'll see very few that have any rust. <laughs> that's a uh, man th this i i wanna i wanna find a three-quarter ton travel all so bad um it has every single factory option except bucket seats but i actually have the bucket seats for it in the back i just had them redone so it's a barn door three-quarter ton factory pto winch big block power steering power brakes ac camper overloads trailer tow package power steering cooler trans cooler i mean it was like deluxe interior it had everything you could possibly put on it like, I know this one's not for sale, but mm -hmm. something like this, what would it sell for? Uh, probably 30, 35. That green one went for 55. Jeez. Why? Because there wasn't a flaw in the paint, there wasn't a flaw in the interior, and you could jump in it and drive it to New York City. They're getting to that. The really nice ones, like, I've had plenty of people offer me 35 for this, and I'm just like, no, I can't, I can't find another one. You're right, That's yeah, you have to replace it. One of 1,500 of 50 trucks, basically. Jeez. But if you, like, if you Marty report it, report it down like yeah. that type of deal. Um, and this has got 182 or 184,000 original miles, and it's, like, the guy built it to haul equipment and old tractors. He was a repair guy, and then he's also a gasser, hot rod racer. Wow. In California. It's amazing. Yeah. And we use it all the time. That's what we use to go rescue trucks all the time. Especially with the 34 weight in it. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't fast, but there ain't nothing that won't pull. There's no hill. You never even have to take it out of high gear most of the time on the hill. He absolutely worship and love this truck. And you can tell. Yeah, you can tell how how well he took care of it. It's just a beautiful truck. But did you buy it from him or did you buy it from him? I so his widow, he passed away ten years ago. His widow sold it to his best friend who continued to haul his gassers and hot rods and stuff like that with it. Never tried to get a title enough by accident. I bought it from him and technically I bought it from her because she came the day we bought it. Because she wanted to know where it was going and who it was going to. Sure. It wasn't as much for them about the money as about where it was going and what, yeah. how it was going to be used. Right place. Yeah. 
She knew you weren't going to make profit out of it. Right. No, I don't want to. I don't ever want to sell it. My boy, I told my boys when we bought it, I said, you guys got to figure out what to do with this one. I'm done. You stay you bought it so you'd have your own fire truck just I in bought case. it. I literally bought it because it adds to my collection. I wanted to have an international fire truck, but I bought it for fire protection. It actually saves me money on my insurance. My homeowner's insurance. <laughs> yeah, because I have a fire truck on site. So they don't require, the homeowner's insurance didn't require anything of you to. Oh, they required pictures and everything else, and uh, I could show that I had taken the volunteer fire fire training, all that stuff, so I knew how to use it. But yeah, it knocked 250 or 200. Railroad used some too, yeah, because they, they were crew haulers, because you could put six guys in these little. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry? Some stories about this. I had a bunch of firefighters reach out to me, and a couple of the guys, one of them was a captain. He said, I know those trucks. He said, I know the options on that. He said, that was probably one of less than 100 they ever made because it was one of the most expensive ones with the winch and the four wheel drive and everything like that. So they bought the truck, and then they went to the fire company that had it outfitted, the upfitter or whatever. When it was all said and done, it was $136,000 in 1975. Now that's why you don't find most of these in the South. They uh, they just didn't have the they didn't have the funds for it. And now the funny thing is, if you do the math to today's money, that's like five fifty six hundred grand. That's what these trucks cost now. Mm -hmm. That was absolutely what they costed back then, mm -hmm. which is just mind blowing. This thing is probably my favorite thing you've got in your entire collection. I've really? always wanted to buy one of these things. I've wanted to buy one for like ten years. I could just never find the right one. Mm-hmm. There was this a U.S. Forest Service truck? Uh, no, no it was, we were just talking about. Sorry, I missed that. No, it's okay. It was Mount Shasta City, California. Originally, it was a it was a brush fire truck for Mount Shasta. It was built for Cal Fire, and then it transferred to Corvallis, Oregon, in 1984, and they ran it all the way till 2016. Oh wow! So it's okay. only got 10,000 miles on it. And it's got a it's pump on the back, so you don't use the truck engine to pump with. That's super cool. Yeah. <clears throat> And everything's fully functional, 100%. 100% everything works. How did you find this thing? Facebook Marketplace. It's a big block international gas with an Allison automatic, and it weighs 18,000 pounds with no water in it. <laughs> so when we're coming up the hill, it did 17 mile an hour. That's it. Oh, as fast as I could go, it was seven, 17 miles an hour. But, man, it was slower and snot rolling down a frozen window. <laughs> huh. Well, you know, I've always been looking for an excuse to buy a fire truck, so... You don't have, you don't use excuses, you just go and do it. I mean, we did buy two rail trucks just because. Yeah, yeah. and we don't even have a railroad. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Find this truck. They called me. <laughs> Lady, her husband passed away. Go watch the video, I did a video, I told the whole story of this truck. Um, we got it, it hadn't run in about 10 years, so we did plugs, wires, cap rotor, all the fluids, all the filters, diff covers, T case. Sandblasted, powder coated the wheels, new tires, polished the hubcaps, new brakes, new suspension bushings, got Bilstein 5150s all the way around, uh, redid the power steering, put the sliding rear window back in, she had it but it wasn't in, put the antenna back on, put the, these are actually factory on the build sheet, grab bars, put those really? back wow. on. Really? Yep. And just made it a driver. I've got an Alaskan camper in there I was going to put on it at some point but I never did. I, anything that I've ever had a duplicate of, I've like I have this truck and then I have the step side, the cowboy truck, and mm -hmm. they're not the same truck, but they're kind Close. of the same truck. And it's like this is a fleet side, that's a step side. I wanted to have one of everything. I'm you know I'm just a hoarder like everybody else is. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the pictures of our shop? Yeah. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, we're all in the same. You, you don't have to. We all go to the to... same meetings. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, 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 our teams aren't working anymore. Yeah. I. I will regret selling it because I know how hard it is to find another one. It really is. Especially, this Good is my choice. favorite year with the, the 69 70 girl is my favorite. This is a two-year only color, the um, green metallic. I had a 69 and I sold it and it was the nicest one I'd ever had of these. It was a manual. I sold it to the gentleman that built my Peterbilt and I thought I'd never find one. And two <laughs> months later, this lady calls me on this trip. Mm -hmm. so I... <laughs> This one, but I will say, this one actually isn't as nice as the one I sold the other guy. And it was original paint, too. It was a 69. It's a one-year only. Uh, it's called metallic, or a copperhead, copperhead metallic. It's a copper metallic color. Oh, it's a one-year nice. only color. I bet that's really nice. So, and it was a big block with a four-speed. But it had manual steering, manual brakes. This is an automatic power steering, power brake, camper special, overloads, power steering cooler, tranny cooler. <laughs> this thing has it had everything. Yeah, slide-out bumper. 
you know. Slide out. A slide out bumper. Yeah, you pull the pins and you can pull the bumper out. So if you have an overhang on your camper, like oh, a ten no, and a half foot camper, cool. your bumper can support your camper. I think this would look good part next to my green seventy one. <laughs> this is a seven. What would Jade say? She'd just tell me, sure, why not? Yeah. At this point? Yeah. The workbench and I picked up the antenna and came over, sure enough, the screws right on. Mm -hmm. She goes, let me tell you a little story about that antenna. I said, <laughs> please do. <laughs> she said, my husband loved this truck so much and he drove it every day and it was his pride and joy. And we go down the highway, he'd take that antenna and he'd tie it to the camper. But when the camper was off and he would park it in the garage at the house, Every night when he came home from work, she goes, I always knew when he came home because he pulled up in the driveway and he'd go to go to the drive in the garage and bam, it smacked the siding on the side of my house. And she goes, there's a mark where it was just taking the paint off. <laughs> she goes, so God, God rest his soul. When he died, I took that son of a bitch off and shoved that truck in the garage. And I was like, okay. Yes, and she said, and then I had the siding redone and I had it repainted and you never even know he did it. <laughs> she goes, but that's my... That's my little hitch with that antenna. And I was like, all doing? right. With the truck? That bed was built in 77. Well, then that's, 100%. Well, and I figured you probably already knew, but when I started looking at it, I was like, but I But I've never heard the is. story about the helicopter. Yeah. I've heard about the planes. I've heard about building roads over the marsh. Mm -hmm. Anything. I had a couple guys that were CBs that told me about building roads over sand and soft areas where they had to drive the uh, troop carrier trucks and the deuce and halves and stuff like that. Yeah, they, they put that down because the skids would slide on that because right. they could get forward momentum sure but they couldn't get flight so the the jet engine was pushing them down the that and they could with the extra force of the guys pushing they could catch airspeed and eventually catch liftoff and by the time they flew to where they were going and flew back they were light enough that if they landed in you know a rice paddy or whatever they could take off there because they <laughs> <laughs> just like pete just like pete just like pete don't turn me upside down, man. Yeah, that's, that's how you lose. Sheets or something like that. He goes, he went in there. I think it's, I think it was, I think he paid like 150 or 200 dollars really? for like 200 sheets of it. Jesus. He goes, he built that flatbed. He built the trailer. He used it for horse uh, panels. <laughs> He's like, he used that stuff for everything. He was just crafty. Well, right? it's freaking thick. Well, it all yes. it all interlocked together. It yep. doesn't. And then hold, he welded it. It doesn't hold any uh, dirt or mud. Correct. Because the the dimple die lets the mud slide off yep. of it. That's why they used it in Vietnam, is it wouldn't stick to the mud. Yep. Even if you landed uh, a Huey on it, it wouldn't push it far enough down in the mud that they couldn't get it back. So what was also interesting about this guy, and what ties me to him a little bit even more, is he he built an equipment business, a vintage equipment business. So his business was he would go out and restore and repair vintage tractors, crawlers, backhoes for farmers that had old equipment, stuff from the 40s and 50s and mm -hmm. 60s. He would come out to your farm, he'd load it on his truck, take it back to his shop, do whatever you wanted him to do to it, and then he'd bring it back to you on the truck and unload it at your farm. That was his, he built his business. That was kind of right up your alley. So that's, yeah, I've been following this project. So that's 2012 <laughs> Super Duty underneath that. That's awesome. So this has got, I've gone through three different iterations of engines for this, and I've yet to put a motor in it. I've owned this truck for 10 years, it's never driven. We just did all the suspension like a year and a half, two years ago, I got that all done. But I bought this truck, to make the donor for this truck. That's a six liter with a six L80 with a manual shift T case. Mm -hmm. So then I got a DT360 International, 5.9. Oh yeah. Diesel, mm -hmm. With an Allison. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna put that in. And then I got online and found like 10 or 12 or 15 guys that have taken a square body International and put a DT360 in it with an Allison. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. And then I watched this video from Rich DeBoss, in the DeBoss garages mm -hmm. in Canada. Mm -hmm. And he stuck a 3126 Caterpillar in an OBS Ford. Yep. We sponsored that truck. Did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, I don't have an opinion one way or the other about the guy. I just like what he sure, did. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I know where there's a 3126 Cat with a 6 plus 1 Spicer manual transmission. That'd be badass. <laughs> and That's it awesome. weighs less than the DT360 does. And it's you got such a big engine compartment in these right. trucks that you can put whatever you want So in I think that's... I think this winter we're going to put a 3126 Caterpillar in it. This is actually the Ford frame rails. We cut the front of the International off and the Ford actually lined right up. We just fish plated it and sleeved it. And then we cut the front of the Ford off and we built all this from scratch so I could hang all the factory sheet metal, core support, and everything else back on. You, well, for, you really wouldn't be able awesome. to tell from the outside. And you well, put some paint on the frame rail, you probably wouldn't be able to tell either. That's when you shove a motor, yeah. Mm -hmm. You shove an engine in here, you're, you're not going to be able to tell. 
Now what's funny about this truck, and as you know from following me, every one of my trucks has a story. Sure. So I bought this truck 10 years ago out of a barn about 12 miles away from here. And this truck was originally two wheel drive, three quarter ton long bed. It came out of Arizona originally. It's when I went so rust free, yeah. And straight. Well, it, it, it's been here since, it's been in Bend, Oregon since 82. Oh, oh geez. Yeah, he bought it in 82. So he had a 74 travel all and he blew, he was going up to Alaska and he blew the motor up in it. So he came back from Alaska, had it towed back as an old boy. And they went down to Arizona for the winter like they always do to go uh, snowbird. Saw this on a car lot, drove it home, gutted it, fixed the travel all, pushed this into the barn. <laughs> So in 82, he pushed this into the barn with no drivetrain. And over the years, his kids, who wanted to go buy beer, started pulling pieces off of it and took pieces to the scrapyard. Oh my gosh. So it had no rear axle, oh had no God. front axle, had no driveline, had no tranny, had no, uh, no brake booster. And uh, later on, when I got it, no hood. <laughs> I took the hood too. <laughs> How the hell did you find a hood that we're matches getting, We're getting to that. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, I go over driving down this road and I see this travel all part of this farm and I stop, knock on the door and ask about the travel, not knowing this truck even existed. And you were just like, hey. I said, hey, if you ever want to sell a travel all, and the guy that met me at the door is about our age and he said, yeah, dad's getting older and he's having some trouble. We're kind of cleaning up the property. We are going to be selling some stuff. I'll take your number and when, when the time's right, I'll give you a call and you can buy it. We'll sell you the travel all. I got a bunch of parts for it and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, no problem. And just left my name and number. and. About 18 months later, he called me. He said, hey, dad passed away uh, about six months ago and we're kind of starting to get rid of everything now and clean everything up. And if you're still interested in the travel, I'll, you know, come on out and I'll make you I'll make you a deal on it. And I was like, okay. So I went over to look at it. Great truck, ran and drove, nice half ton four wheel drive travel, all. Nice, nice piece. And uh, I said, cool. I said, I'll take it. We agreed on price and everything. And I was getting ready to load it up. He's like, oh, there's there's one hitch. And I was like, what's the hitch? He's like, I got a bunch of spare parts for it that, yeah. that go with it. And you got to take everything. And I was like, OK, no problem. Twist my arm. So we walk in. For the, the same amount of money? For the same amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So, so we walk in the barn. And this is sitting in the barn with no hood, no drivetrain, no axles on four round firewood stumps. He goes, you're you're part of your deal is you got to get that out of here. This is your oh, spare this, part. This is your, this, and, and, the, and the bed had had a few miscellaneous things, but this was the spare part. You and, like, and and it had a title. And you're like, wait, don't show too much emotion. And so, and yeah, don't show any emotion. I just paid the man. I loaded the travel all. So anyway, uh, it was it, we had to get creative. I had to put an axle under the back, put some U-bolts on it. The front leaf was leaf sprung, so we just skidded onto the trailer like skis with mm -hmm. uh, little dish plates and stuff. So we got it on the trailer, but but yeah. So this was wow. this was the spare parts that I had to take. Well, oh right. darn, right. Fast forward. <laughs> Eight years, because two years ago we did the suspensions when I started working on this. Eight years later, we are down in Southern Oregon for my son's soccer tournament. And anytime we go out of town, I always take my pickup and I take the trailer because we're going to we're going to spend the night and I'm going to be on Craigslist. So, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I get on Craigslist and there's uh, two travel alls for sale. One's a parts rig, one's a almost a runner. So I go, let's go look at those. So we go look at them was the same year as this truck, was the same color, hood, I thought. And it was almost a runner and the parts truck was not really worth taking, but he had a cab. So I bought the cab and I bought the travel all. Got it home, unbolted the hood off the travel all, bolted it on here, shut the hood, washed it. And I was like, you couldn't match that patina in anywhere in your life ever if you thought you could. And nobody will believe this hood didn't come on this truck. Yeah. And it did not come on this truck. It came on a travel all from a vehicle that lived five states away from where this truck was originally. That's nuts. So I put the hood on. I put another hood on the other travel all that didn't match, made it run and drive, sold that travel all, and the hood went on this. And then as soon as I put the hood on, I started blowing the truck apart and started working on it. Because I, I couldn't put, bring myself to put a hood on it and just flat black the hood, because that was the other option. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have this thing as a patina truck. Look where the patina is, the little rough spots on the yeah, corners, the edges, the fade. Yeah, it's I mean, perfect. You can't tell. No, you nobody look, believes me. Like, that even the even these little bit of scratches here like match the... Uh -huh. I, it's, nobody it's believes nuts. me. So, good family friends of mine own the international, owned the International Harvester dealership in Missoula, Montana. But anyway, they'd had the dealership forever and ever. When my, when my buddy was a young kid, I mean, we were little kids in the 70s, this old boy came in and ordered this travel all for his wife. 
And this travel all has everything. It's got wood paneling, it's got deluxe molding, it's barn door, it's big block, it's automatic, it's got AC, it's got everything, but it's half time, not three quarter time. And uh, he came in in October, November of the end of the year, got paid out for his hay season, had his big stack of money, he was coming in, to, they told him his truck was there, he was coming in to pay for it. Had all the, they'd ordered it, so the line set ticket and all the paperwork had his name on it because it was built for him, basically. And he came in to pick it up. And the day he came to pick it up was the, the day that they were unloading off the car hauler trailer. They had this and a couple scouts and some pickups, they were unloading everything. Well, this was on the trailer and one of those yeah, was on the trailer. And, uh, he said he, he and he came in, he saw this and he saw that and he saw this and he looked at my buddy's dad and he goes, whatever you need to do to make that work, he's like, we don't, we don't need that, we need that. <laughs> he's like, well, we ordered this for you, you own it. Like it's already titled, it's plated, like it's in your name, yeah. like they had the plates and everything for them and all that stuff like that. He's like, I don't care. He's like, take it on trade, take it as a demo, unwind the deal, whatever you need to do. Yeah, He's like, I don't I'm, want this. I'm leaving with that, <laughs> and you guys can own this. Thank you. Well, then Perfect. it's November. It's about ready to start snowing and stuff like that. This is a half ton truck. It's not as sellable for them because it's not a three quarter ton. It's green and whatever. So my buddy's dad is like, what are we going to do with this? And my, my friend, Todd, he's like, we'll just put on the lot as a demo. It's got 24 miles on it or whatever. You know? It's like, yeah, but I don't want to take that big a hit because it's been titled. Now it's technically used truck with 24 miles on it, you know? And uh, he's like, all right, well, let's take it down to the plow dealership. He goes, throw a plow on it. We'll plow snow with it this winter. And we'll take the plow off in the spring and then we'll sell it as a demo with 2,000 miles on it. And then it'll be, we can ride it, we can ride it down. Yeah. Um, the original plates that expired in 1974 are still on the truck. <laughs> and the dealer plate was covering those that they took off in 2010 and they ran it for uh, 45 years and put 42,000 miles on it and plow left on the plow on it. But basically I bought a plow and they gave me the travel all with it. And now it plows snow here just like it did for the last 45 years at my shop. It That's has insane. for the last 12 years. Maybe it wasn't back then, but it's a cool color now. It was a hard sell for them back then. Yeah. It was a half, it was a full load, but it was a half load. And there's the original plate. Expired Montana 74. And it's been in four low four wheel drive ever since it's, I've never had it out of four wheel drive. It's, it's whole life. The hub's been turned in. They have bought it. It only gets. 20, 30, 50 miles a year on her wheel. There we go. Chloride, so they got a little bit of rust, but it's still interesting. One day, one of the tailpipes fell off, my buddy Todd, who glass packed and turned the pipes out right <laughs> in front of the tires in the back, and it's got straight glass packs on. So it's loud as hell, but it's funny. So, and that plow is 1973. <laughs> It's cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's crazy because the plow just looks like it's. Did you see the tag on the on the uh, license plate on the back? It expired in '74. I did. I got a real good close-up shot of that. So, and then this, the number on Montana plates, that's the county number. Four is Missoula County. <laughs> so that's how you know that it is legit. The plate from there, from that county, from that area. But I can re, I can buy one just like it. That's the and make it the same. I, I could make the truck again. I know exactly what everything is, and it's not hard. I just what was it? It was a '71, so one year only waffle stamp grill, travel all, um, half ton two wheel drive with the factory wood paneling. It was Harvest Gold with green interior, and it had bucket seats and everything. Nice. The big block automatic AC. It had the trailer package because we had the overloads and stuff like that. But it was two wheel drive. We went to Yellowstone, we went to Glacier, we went everywhere in that thing. So there he is. <laughs> What's up? Hey. What's up? What's up, Seth? What's up, man? How you been? Good. 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 How about you? Good. I thought Chris? you had a gate to keep hippies out. Yeah. He, <laughs> What's up, man? He unfortunately knows the What's cow. up, man? How are you? <laughs> oh, dude, I don't know what you're doing. No. <laughs> you ready for the weekend yet? No. Yeah, no, that's neither. Not at all. I got it. I'm not done packing. Not. Mm -hmm. The whole camping part, I got a lot of food stuff to prep, and <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a shit show, but whatever. And uh, I roll in this little town, it's called Twin Bridges, and just like I usually do, I'm out picking, just driving around looking for old junk to buy, you know, on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Roll into the convenience store, and, and they're in town, and, and here's this travel all, and it's got the old Q78 buckshots with wagon white steel wheels. You know, mm -hmm. it's got a little lift on it, so they're like 36-inch buckshots or whatever they were back then, the Q78. 
It's got a red door, it's got a blue door, it's got a brown <laughs> fender, it's got dents and scratches, and it's got mud up and down both sides. I mean, there ain't a straight panel on it. It's running, the heater's on, there's two blue healers in it barking at me, going crazy. And there's about a 300 point, or 300 score bull elk dead on the roof, strapped down with what rope. And in the back, <laughs> there's camping gear, there's a chainsaw, his guns are in the gun rack, and I'm just like, but the this truck has got it going on. Yeah, the thing is badass. Like I'm just looking at it, going, and, it <laughs> and it instantly triggered a memory. Like I hadn't thought about internationals for 30 years or 20 years. Yeah, and it triggered this memory back to when I'm a kid, and this old boy comes walking out, and uh, I was a little intimidated because he's about six 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 seven, about three thirty. <laughs> He's wearing uh, bib overalls with a flannel shirt, and he's got blood all up and down him from cutting the elk up and all the stuff like that and hauling it onto his truck. And he comes out, and I just kind of like, hey, is that your travel? Yeah, yeah. And he starts talking and starts telling me stories. And I said, oh, my name's Ben. Nice to meet you. And I put my hand out, and he grabs my hand. And, you know, he's got just big old mitts, and they grab uh, the, 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 like a handshake like a farmer does, right, where it's a real firm handshake. But what was different about him is he's a, from that old school where he grabbed my hand, and he pulled me in. He goes, nice to meet you. And I'm like, this fucking close to the guy. And he's this tall. And I'm staring, I'm smelling elk blood everywhere, and mud and dirt. You can tell he slept in the truck for the last five days while he's cunting this elk. And anyway, so mm -hmm. was a, it was a very vivid memory that will never go away. And that was 15, 18 years ago. You know? Damn. And so the next day, I'm, I'm on Craigslist, and I'm, like, like, I'm like, I buy a travel all, you know, and I was like, start looking around, and, and it just kind of, it yeah, kind of trickled into that, and then I moved here, and then it just blossomed, so. Yeah. And what I like is, I love Ford, Chevy, and Dodges. I love seeing all the beautiful C10s and the old bump sizes. This is different, though. Nobody does this. Nobody does these. And every time I go to Cars and Coffee, I got the only one. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I like that.